So you want to hear the best sound ever? Hold on. Oh, fuck yeah. Uh, hi. I'm Hannah. Um, and if it isn't obvious already, I cosplay. Um, and, and I, and, and I, and I like things. Yes, I cosplay, and I really want to show my process and how I think about things. And why not a better time than Crunch making a cosplay in less than a month for uh, a convention coming up. So, the costume is Yasha from Critical Role, one of my favorite characters. And I'm really at the start of it, so part of me was like, why not just, just film some of the shit I do? So I guess since this is the first part, you might be asking yourself, what do I do? Well, I'm a big drafter planner person. So these are my notes, uh, kind of breaking down what I wanted to do. Uh, biggest thing being that I was gonna use as much of my own fabric as I could, um, or my own things. The only things I had to buy were some white cotton for her coat and this like kind of meshy looking chiffon that makes it look like mesh fabric. Um, cause there's some parts like in her shirt and her pants that make it look like, like around there on her legs that kind of make it look like yoga pants, or like not yoga pants, but like workout pants where they like show skin. So that was my, that's kind of my goal for this project. Um, so really the first thing I wanted to do was work on the coat cause I have the dye. I have both MX reactive dye, which is like dye good for cotton and like plant things Great for cotton, but I only I don't really have that much blue and her coat is kind of like a blue gray thing going on so um I also got like writ dye which is like okay for polyester and like all that kind of thing so I know that'll be fine but her coat's kind of weird because it kind of is a gradient um I think that's the first thing I'm gonna do is dye um but I just kind of want to show what I have in my dress form which by the way was 69 bucks at a fucking red, red salvation army I don't know why I got the red from, um, I got it from the Salvation Army in, uh, Boulder. Y'all, these things retail like 200 bucks. I got a fucking steal. Um, so that's what I'm draping on with this, <laughs> with this, <laughs> with this lady. Um, so what I have now is just kind of like, here, I'll show um is essentially kind of the idea of the silhouette because her coat's not really fully in the back it's kind of to the side um this was fur that i had trying to figure out how i want to do the kind of mantle to it i know i wanted to kind of not necessarily attach to the shirt but just kind of throw on top um uh, which is why i have chains and there's going to be kind of straps um like <laughs> uh, you you see in my picture it, right there you see you see that um, these like pleather straps, which I have plenty of pleather. Um, and then the pants, because that was the one thing coming into this cosplay that I was just like, hmm, how do you how do you do Yasha's pants? Cause they, like I said, they kind of look like athletic wear, athleisure. Um, with like the openings at the sides. So what I have done is I got a shit ton of athletic pants from a friend and a couple of them were black. So I chose one that fit well, and then I've cut it right in the middle at her crotch. No. Yes? Why did I, why did I cut it at the crotch? You know, this is why you don't question, why you don't start things like two weeks ago, and then you're like, why, why did I do that? Okay. Um, not to diverge this video too much into other media, um, but since this is my Yasha from Critical Role cosplay, yes, I do play D&D, yes, I watch D&D, yes, I'll do all kinds of D&D content, and I just want to share that, um, thank you to my wonderful DM for giving me this Raven Locked book because that's what I'm using for my, uh, one shot I'm running next Friday, which is just a Raven Loft theme little one shot, I think it'll be fun, um, but I just want to share, um, my new set of dice, uh, it's really hard to see, fuck, on the camera and it's like ah oh, I did plastic dice whatever but they're the fucking trans colors 
I, I'm not trans, but I love the trans flag. If not to be that gay person, but it is possibly the su most superior flag of the gay community, and I will not take uh, questions on that. Okay, so first thing is dyeing the fabric. Uh, I eventually figure out that whole pants thing in the next video. Um, but yeah, I just started heating up some water, started cooking things on my pot, and yeah. Hello. Um. So I'm outside. Um, quirky girl things. Uh, I just finished dying and I moved the pot outside because what I'm gonna do now is, well, first of all, I mixed put one part indigo, one part um, turquoise, and that's just gonna be kind of a base color. But then I'm gonna pick this up and you know start doing a gradient. But instead of like a true gradient, I'm going to take it. Out. Okay, it's gonna be crazy. But I'm gonna take it out squeeze a little bit and then I'm gonna put some of this navy blue in because it darkens like so much more it's not like a perfect gradient like it really gets gray and like almost black so I'm gonna put that in and then at the last part when it's gonna be black mixing some of this to make more of a murky color um the idea being that since this water is hot enough I can take it out add some stuff in mix it put it back in and I don't have to like reheat it because it's quite steamy and since I'm outside, I don't have to worry about seeing anything. I also wanted to show my little swatch. Like, obviously this isn't the true color that it's gonna be because I just did a dip and that's not gonna tell you exactly because obviously it's wet, but also needs time to dry. Um, but at least for the bottom of her coat, this is gonna look really nice. And obviously it's getting darker now. So now I'm gonna try to do the thing and I really hope I don't burn my toes. Why? Well, me out the water uh yeah it worked so um what i did was i put it on the ground i, I put it i put it on the ground and then i just grabbed it and i put it um it's hard to see but like on this tube thing we got and like quickly <laughs> poured in my shit um the little swatchy thingy is drying right now but it's really hard to see on camera here but I can visibly see the difference between my first swatch and this one, which that's more the color. So it's in there right now. I think I'm gonna do that another 10 minutes, then bring some of it out and let some of it darken. Um, I'm kind of doing pours as I'm going just to help. Hi, so went well. Uh, minimal dye, I'm not, I don't wanna show you my titties. Uh, minimal dye on my fingers. They look a, a little like, post-mortem, you know, kind of thing. Um, but it worked out really well. Here's what it looks like so far. It's not as gradient up here as I was hoping, but also it's still wet, so it's drying a bit. But I'm really happy how the bottom turned out, and I'm really happy with the layers that happened, because I knew I knew doing this, like, it wasn't going to be, you know, a perfect slide, slide, slide. Like, there was going to be some weird parts, but I really like how it turns out, and it's going to make doing kind of the cracks even better. And like, yeah, there's a swatch there, but honestly, I don't mind that because the bottom of this is just going to be thrown with bleach and probably like thicker amounts of dye. Because if you look at the rendering of her, it kind of looks like splats and stuff on the bottom. So I envision that as kind of staining that's happened through the years. Um, whereas like the top is a bit nicer, but the bottom, you know, it's just, it's just she's fucking yashes. We should have been through, I, I don't know, shit. And yeah shit but anywho outside of that i'm really happy how it looks so far i'm excited to see what it looks like when it's dry um because the next step is going to be adding those details but after that it's mainly going on to the fur um and i'm just going to hem the edges and then leave the bottoms raw because it kind of looks like that in the rendering and then um i guess get started on like the strap parts which will be really fun again sorry for showing off my tits Hey. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> um, so, um, you cannot see in the background, but my coat is still drying. Um, but I'm really liking how it's drying so far. Right now, well, I've been doing a couple things. I've been writing a to-do list of things I need to do. Um, cause how I'm doing this is I'm kind of working on the coat first so I can get an idea of like, 
that space and then work on the rest of it because the hardest thing for me with the coat was trying to know to do like the straps for it I was like I'll just cut strips but I was like no that's not really gonna work because it might be too short or too long when I put it on so I'm just gonna get everything with the coat done first put that on see how I like that place straps and stuff where I need to and then go from there but as I'm doing my to-do list I'm you know going on the Amazons and looking at supplies I need going on Amazon and Michaels and Joann's and stuff like that and um one of the supplies that I was looking at that I need needed still was a glove pattern because she wears these like weird fingerless gloves and so I was looking at some on Etsy because they have like patterns on Etsy but I'm gonna be honest I'm really confused what the fuck like A4 or A3 means with printing and when I tell you I have like the bitchiest of fucking printers like it's an okay printer it's a scanning but sometimes I just have really I have bad software luck and shit and my family commute years old so I'm doing the hardest thing that any stitcher knows to mankind and that's making your own fucking glove um, now I will say it's a little easier this one because she like her thumb is it's kind of covered but I'm just gonna cheat these and do like half -sies. and it's not fingers so it's a fingerless glove which makes it really easy to make because I don't have to worry about trying to consider space there the only thing I have to consider about space is here and not saying my life is like so difficult but gloves are just a little bit harder for me to make because I have really really bony wrist but then a huge fucking hand um so the hardest thing for me is usually having to make the space on my wrist a little bit bigger um and I say that like as if I've done it successfully I've never made a successful glove I gloves are so hard but I'm, I'm hoping this works if it doesn't then I'll try to keep looking for a glove pattern because I have been looking and like the Yaya Han one I wanted like sold out in stores and like I don't want to buy it for fucking $20 online when I can get it in store for like a buck when it's on sale uh, so as you can see I'm kind of testing stuff out on, on um, newsprint so I used to use for like making charcoal art um, it works really well as powdering paper better than like stiffer paper like I don't know like your normal white paper or anything like that brown paper is pretty good too but this is just what I have around but it kind of works like tissue paper it's it's light and like yeah it tears it can tear easily but it keeps pretty sturdy and it's really easy to kind of do math and write things on um so I kind of figured out how to do a glove and it's basically I just like laid my hand flat traced around it added like half an inch um and then folded it cut cut out the shape and then kind of i'll be honest like really just kind of guesstimated my thumb like i put i put my hand to the edge and i was like okay if my th that would where the seam would be if there was going to be a seam here and so it's going to be on fold so i'll just cut a hole and bada bing bada boom it actually works pretty well all i need to do is add some more on the side and i should be okay and then right now I'm figuring out, it, oh god, it's really hard to see with my lighting. I'm figuring out the arm piece to it, and right now I'm just trying to figure out how wide out I want to do. The line there is like too exactly to my arm, so I'm just going to keep adding stuff, and it's okay if it's a little too big because I can take it in. Um, so as you can tell, I got sidetracked from actually doing my to-do list and instead decided to make a glove pattern. Um, once I kind of get a somewhat of a glove pattern, I'll go back to my to-do list, write that out. Um, and then hopefully, uh, next parts are going to be working on the cloak and sewing the fur. Do the fabric. Hi, so, um, I lied. This clip is not me sewing on to the fur. You'll find a lot of times that I contradict myself in this. I'll be like, oh, I'm going to do this, and then I do something completely else. So right now, I'm ironing it out so I can get ready to paint it in bleach. Um, I love ironing, it's so fun. Um, yeah, so just getting that all ready um, to paint with bleach. As you can see, I'm holding it up. Oh, look at me, oh, I like it, I like it. Ooh, so cute. Um, I believe this next media clip is, uh, there we go, okay. <laughs> um, so you can see, I take it outside, 
I get it ready to bleach um, and just kind of there wasn't really any pattern to it I just kind of went batshit crazy on it um, I'm mainly stalling right out oh, there she is I was stalling talking because I wanted to show off my chicken um, I actually okay well I had two chickens during the process of making this video uh, my last two chickens got killed by something uh, so this is the last footage ever of my sweet girl hawk um, she was lonely she was an old chicken too she stopped laying eggs um, but she just wanted to come and say hi and as you can see in that clip too um, it's very windy where I'm at so it was really hard to kind of paint things on top of having not only a chicken crawl around but eventually you'll see my cat crawling around um, because I was really worried about like it turning and some of the bleaching staining spots I didn't want to um, but it turned out really well um, I just kind of went crazy I did some spurts um, I just did some streaks um, it was honestly really fun I've painted with bleach before and it's honestly such a great medium for fabric um, but make sure you take your precautions and take breaks because even after this I was like holy shit the bleach smell So this is her coat so far. I'm actually really liking it. I think I went a little too crazy on the bottom, but that's okay because this is all gonna get cut up and jagged. Um, Cause the only thing that I'm really gonna sew are the edges just to make sure they're nice and clean. And then this top part, I'll probably just do a surge because it's gonna go into the, the mantle part. But I'm really happy how it looks. It very much gives me um, Stormlord vibes, which is what I was hoping for, especially with the little lightning streaks. And as you've seen from my other stuff, I have, I have, I have a lot of fucking animals around here so it makes it a little hard to do projects outside and it doesn't help that it's also windy and rainy out i rewashed my coat after the bleach and that was drying on my patio um i've got those chains part done so now i can make the the strap parts um i had thought about oh maybe buying some but like i don't really know how to use leather could fake see it um i use this fabric on another friend's costume and it's like a pleather kind of thing it's stretchy it's shiny the hardest thing is gonna be doing any sort of like top stitching because like this part the shinier part definitely has a hard time going through my machine actually i lied it's kind of easy um my machine did fine so <laughs> So yeah, um, I mentioned earlier about the chain parts. Uh, I basically took some time to make like the chain decorations, i.e. it was just like adding some metal, um, like jewelry metal onto these chains that I had, um, kind of like an image where it's just kind of like these big circles. Um, really just preparing that was it. The hardest thing during it, and like I tried filming it, but it was so hard, was just trying to figure out how to connect like ends. And I only just, honestly just E6000 it. Um, but as you see in this clip, I'm just kind of cutting things how I want to, lining things up. I did about three inch wide strips. Um, the intention being that I would sew a half an inch on each side and then top stitch down. Um, which is basically what happened. The only downside was like it puckered a bit, so it's not like perfectly flat. But honestly, like the strips already like stretch against my body, so it did not bother me. They just look like they were wow almost like they were in use almost like she wears this costume like not even cause this is fucking what she wears i then also gathered um the top of the coat a bit so i just did like a long um stitch not back stitching at all and just kind of gathered it all um this was just gonna help me kind of lay it out a bit better instead of having to do any sort of folds or pleats um in the coat and then you also saw in there that i did a rolled hem on all the sides except for the bottom girlies does this not look fucking good oh my god i i have no words i i have no words like i really love how the coat has come out i might re-dip it down below in some blue because it's a little too light um but i might do that ironed out did a roll hemmed on all the edges except for the bottom it's really hard to see them um and like i try to be a little jagged but like 
in the image it looked jagged to me but it's kind of hard to tell it's, it's kind of it's kind of hard to tell um so we'll see how it works once it's in the wash but doesn't this i just and what i'm really happy about and excited about is the little sigil here i didn't film anything doing it but it was basically just warbler and i just cut pieces out i haven't done anything to it yet i need to use my heat gun and like glue pieces together and then just paint it and it's done and then oh, that's some extra fabric and then do these strips so yeah uh next thing is going to be i'm too scared to use my sewing machine on this fur mainly because i don't want it to look flat when i sew so i'm gonna hand stitch the edges and then probably also hand stitch the actual coat part onto here um but then like make mystery pieces and put that uh, yeah oh and also i love the these that i added it god I'm so excited. <laughs> uh, here's just a, what do you say, not panorama, just a view. <laughs> just a view up close of what I've made so far um, and the progress I made. And then I just went straight to hand stitching most stuff. Hi. Um, I'm really happy what I've done so far. I didn't really film too much working on the straps, but you can see like, it was just basically two pieces sewn together and then there's like a stitch on the sides did like a little loop to catch. I have all my decorations, but I made these new ones with clay and I used the left of the chain. So as they dried, I put the chain in it, but I also reinforced with E6000. It kind of looks like the the Millennium Medallion from fucking <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh! Maybe that should be my next cosplay. I have always wanted to cosplay uh, Seto Kaiba. I have a wig. I feel like I could do him really well. Um, but anywho, I might take them off later because in the costume there's not really a lot of extra like jewel decorations but for now I'm leaving them on um, and I mainly have these like larger centerpieces. Um, really all that I have left is just kind of hand sewing um, so like tacking on the like scraps, sewing like tacking on more of these, pe like more of the chain pieces. Most of it you can see that I kind of already took my pliers and stuff and, and hooked them onto any metal. metal? Um, last thing, of course, is going to be decorating this, which is really just using my heat gun, um, heating up my warbler pieces, and honestly sanding them, and then just painting them. Like, heat them to the piece. Um, I'm not sure how I want to st stick it on. I don't know if I want to stitch that piece on or make it, like, detachable. I may make it detachable, because then it'll be easier to put on the coat part. Um... And like I still have to hand stitch like some more sewn hem things. Um, let me get my camera situated. Um, so it looks like so far the coat looks amazing. The coat, I'm really happy with the coat. I took me a moment because I w was thinking about maybe putting an outer layer, but based on the images, it kind of looked like it was one single piece of fabric. Um, so, cause I was worried about like the lightning strikes of it being too much on the back, but it actually looks really great. So, um, can't really see too much, but yeah, I'm so happy with it. And I might do some more de-stressing on the bottom. Cause all I've done is like my picking shears and like cut it up and tore it a bit. I might take like a, like a wire brush and like brush it out. Um, cause if you want to make things look really distressed, taking like a wire brush and just like going fucking crazy. Yeah. It's going to get those bunches really well. Um, and then I still just need to sew on the coat. So really everything is just kind of hand stitching at this point for the coat part. So yeah, uh, basically I just tacked on some stuff, did some hand stitching. Um, I might have mentioned, but I didn't really like those small spikes at first, but now I love them. And so that's why I'm still kind of keeping them on, even though they're not really to the drawing. I might take them off later, um, but here's just me wearing the stuff. Um, really happy with it. So yeah, like I said, I'm just gonna hand stitch the rest of it. But I just wanna say thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, let me know what tips and tricks you guys have for making your cosplays, um, favorite critical role moments, any conventions you're excited for now that cons are coming back. Uh, make sure you hit that motherfucking like button. Um, and stay tuned for a part two. Bye bye.
Let's go.